welcome back. My last video, you noticed I talked about ment mentality, environment, and one of the most important parts is the action. So I want to get a little bit into the programming aspect. Now, are you in control of yourself, your mind? Are you really all the thoughts that come into your mind? And, you know, everything your mind tells you that, you know, your inner voice and I'm sure it has its own, you know, <clears throat> your in well, let me clarify your inner voice. Like the way I sound on video and my inner voice do not sound nothing alike. Now, I'm going to go a little bit into that mental focus part. Now, are you really in control of your mind, yourself? And are you really your mind and everything that comes out of it? So, what if I did... Da, 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 da. Or, I don't want to grow up. And of course, you got the, like, a good neighbor. Now, I'm sure, you know, y'all came up with, y'all can finish those for me. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, the Toys R Us one. That one there, that's very old one sure a lot of a lot of kids my age still remember it and I'm gonna say kids or you know my people I can still call us kids I guess I'm not sure we're all you know old kids now well not that old I mean I'll say now if you didn't know any of those at all you probably been living up under a rock and then with the, you know, the older one, you'd have to be under the rock about 30 years. So now, what if I asked you, who are you? What do you like to do? What do you do? It's a lot of different ways to answer it, but more than likely, I'd probably get you know, what you do for a living, maybe some of your hobbies, you'll tell me your name. Now, you know, are those things really something that really define you? Now, just think about this. Have you ever done a purge of the mind? When I say purge, I mean, have you ever isolated yourself from any sort of entertainment, social media, heck, basically just your phone and music and just kind of throw everything out that can be in your immediate environment and, you know, maybe you can't, you can't isolate yourself completely, especially if you're working. We have quite a few things that won't allow us to do that. But, now, could you do that? Maybe a day, week, month? Now, if you've ever done maybe just 12 hours or a day, or maybe you forgot your phone, and I know that's pretty hard to do nowadays because... Just be, well, you know, just because the way things are now, the environment we live in, everyone is constantly connected, connected, connected. But if you've ever, you know, forgotten your phone just for a while and it's just you and your thoughts, did these thoughts reflect anything back to you or was it just 
constant chatter of maybe movie scenes, songs. If you really sat back and evaluated some of your thoughts, is there something there that you haven't addressed just yet? Anything stick out to you <clears throat> while you were in that silence? Now, other thing, you know, what if I said Obama's one of our worst presidents we've ever had? Or what if I come at you and say, our president has been doing great. He should not be even, they shouldn't even be entertaining the thought of impeaching him. And then, of course, you know, like, O.J. Simpson, you know, never did any crimes. That man, perfectly innocent man. Oh, she went out on me. Anyway, now, when I said these things, did anything that trigger anything? Did you want to, you know, did that change some opinions about me? Man, I'm sure you got some very, you know, very negative opinions about me. If I truly believe that, which I don't play into none of those. But I challenge you, do these things really matter to you? Are you giving too much energy, too much of your emotion to these things that are out there? These things that disconnect you from yourself now all these you know all these realities all this programming have been affecting your mind and have been lying to you now all these all these things, these choices were not really that free word. Eh? You know, these choices maybe had a loved one that aligned with some of these. And of course, you know, that's going to influence you. Someone in the community, just, you know, anyone you looked up to. And, you know, there was a choice an option that was never brought to the table, the option just of pure free thought. Now, your loved ones, you know, they always work with what they have. So I have, you know, have this little analogy about a farm that your uncle owned. Your uncle, you know, brought fruits, vegetables, because he had a farm, always brought it to you, he loved you, but, you know, he always, well, anyway, he always came through with stuff, so, now, one day, well, not one day, your uncle dies, so now, you inherit the farm from him, and let's say you go there, you get there, this farm is, you know, looks like a disaster. Like, man, what? Thought my uncle had it all together. But when you get there, it's just, you know, things are disarray. There's not nothing that was done very efficiently. So your uncle just kind of worked with what he had there you know more now you have more information you look around and you know you have to fix things you have to repair things there you know your rows are not perfect heck some of the rows probably don't even have nothing in them so you're looking around and you're like, 
this is going to be a very heavy endeavor. Can you stick to that challenge of going through that endeavor? Because let's say another third party comes, they know you inherited the farm and they're like, hey, you know, we want to, you know, we want to invest some money into this for a big percentage. Like let's say they want to buy maybe 80% of this, of the bar, farm and they want, they were going to give you money up front and kind of a little payoff. Now, with this, you no longer own, you don't have full control of this farm. So now they want you to do everything they want. And, you know, you, you took the easy route there. Your other option was to take on this endeavor because there's a lot that you're going to have to do. There's very, it's going to be a very, <clears throat> now the other option was you buckle down, take action, use your time, use your money, and you know, it's not, you're not going to be smooth, easy. It's going to be work. You're going to have to, you know, go through these harsh winters. So, you know, if you buckle down, you're going to be able to sow whatever seeds you like, bring in and raise any animals you want. So, are you gonna endure those harsh winters so you can get those bountiful autumn harvests? And with that, you can see why there's a lot of text out there that use the metaphor of, you know, fruits, vegetables, gardens, because you plant the seeds you want and you have to put the work in to make these seeds grow. And what you program your reality with is the seed. Your actions is what waters them. And then of course, you know, you have to deal with the environment. Like I said, that environment may not be where you need it to be. You have to think about your actions. In your focus this path is a very path that's you know it's not the path of least resistance it's the opposite you have to take that path of resistance kind of how a salmon swims upstream you're you're basically gonna do the same thing to accomplish the goals that you want. This is how you get to your greatness. Push through all that resistance. You know, you're gonna have doubts. You're not always gonna get the support you need. But you know what? I believe in you. I believe in myself. And we can make it happen on this journey. So thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you on the next one.